Hello students, I welcome you all to Engineers Academy. Uh, now we are going to start with chapter 4, Hebelostatics. And we are going to start with the fourth problem of chapter 4. So the fourth problem and the fifth problem is determine the moment about point A of each of the three forces acting on the beam. And in 4-5 we are required to determine the moment about point B of each of the three forces acting on the beam. So as we know that the moment is equal to the the cross product of the force and its momentum, or we, uh, a moment arm, or we can say that this is R cross F. And if you want to find the moment uh, by scalar methods, then the moment is always equal to the force times the perpendicular distance between the force and the pivot point or the axis of rotation. And then there is one another theorem that is known as the Varignan's theorem and the Varignan's theorem says that if you people want to find the moment of a given force, so then the moment of that given force can be determined by finding the moment of its components about that particular point or axis for which we want to find the moment, right? So if we have a force which has two components f of x and f of y, so the moment of that uh, force will be equal to the sum of the moments produced by its component. So we can say that f of x into let's say dx that is the moment arm of the x component plus f of y dy that is the moment arm of the y component. So this is the Varignan's theorem. So we will apply this and this equation in these two particular problems. So now in 4-4 we are required to find the moment of these three forces about this particular point A. So now let me write that the moment about A due to F1 that will be equal to and let's assume that the counterclockwise moment is positive. So now as we can see that this F1 is going to rotate this beam in the clockwise direction. So since the <coughs> counterclockwise moment is positive so we will write minus for the clockwise and we can find the moment of f1 about that point a using that uh, f into d equation since we know the perpendicular distance between the force and the axis of rotation so this is the perpendicular distance now we can write that this will be f1 times d now this is minus f1 is 375 pounds and d is 8 feet so we will multiply it with 8 so this is the moment about a due to force f1 so this is 375 multiplied by 8 so this gives us 3000 so this is equal to minus 3000 pound feet this is in pounds and this is in feet so the unit is pound feet and the minus sign tells us that the moment produced is clockwise so if i remove this minus sign then we can write that this moment is clockwise moment Similarly, the moment about A due to that force 2, so that will be equal to again the counterclockwise moment is positive. So this F2, now this F2 is making some angle with the horizontal. So we can resolve this F2 into its components and then we can use this equation, right? So then if we resolve this F2 into its components, so it will have one component in this direction and it will have one component which will be acting vertically downward so now if if let's say this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis then this is f2y component and this is f2x now f2y is if we are considering this angle then this f2y is f2 uh, according to this angle this is f2 sine of theta Right, this F2Y is, we can write that this F2Y, this is F2 sine of theta. And as we can see that uh, this is F2X and the line of, if we extend the line of action of this F2X, so it is passing through that point A. So this means that if the force is, if the line of action of the force is passing through that point A, so it's perpendicular distance from that uh, point of rotation is zero its moment arm is zero so if it's its moment arm is zero so it's not going to produce any moment 
So from this we can conclude that only this component is going to produce the moment about that point A and it is producing the clockwise moment. So we will write minus F2Y and its perpendicular distance from that point A is this distance. So this distance is 8 plus 6 so it is 14 and we can write that this F2X plus F2X and its moment arm is 0. So it is going to produce 0 moment, right? So this will become 0. So we will be left with only this and this is minus and F2Y is F2 sine of theta, F2 is 500 and from this triangle sine of theta is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse which is 4 divided by 5 and uh, multiply by its moment arm which is 14. The perpendicular distance of this component from that point A is 14. So 500 divided by 5, this is 100. So 100 into 4 into 14. So 100 into 4 into 14. This gives us 5600. So this is minus 5600 pound feet. And if we remove this minus sign, then this is clockwise moment. Similarly, the moment of this F3 about that point A, the moment of F3 about point A, and again assuming that the counterclockwise moment is positive, this is equal to. Now again, we have to resolve this F3 into its component. So it will have one component like this, and it will have one component which is going to act vertically downward. Now the angle is made with this component. This is the cos component. We can write that this is 160. This component is 160 cos of 30 and this component is 160 sine of 30. Now again we can apply the Wagner's theorem, this theorem. So the moment of force 3 about point A is uh, this component. This is producing the clockwise moment. So we will write minus that is 160 cos of 30 multiplied by the perpendicular distance. So the perpendicular distance of this cos component from the eight point A is this distance. So this distance is 8 plus 6, 14 plus 5, that is 19 feet. So I will multiply it with 19. And similarly, this component is going to rotate this beam in the counterclockwise direction like this. So that will be positive moment. So we will write plus and this is 160 sine of 30 into the moment on the perpendicular distance from that point A is this distance which is 0.5 so we will multiply it with 0.5 so this will give us the moment of this force 3 about that point A and as I have told you people that the summation of the moments produced by the components of this particular force will be equal to the moment produced by this F3 so this is we can write that this is minus minus 160 cos of 30 into 19 this gives us minus 2632 minus 2632.72 plus that 160 sine of 30 multiply by 0 0.5 so this gives us 40. So this is plus 40. Now if we add up this, this is uh, minus, uh, minus 2632.72 plus 40. So this is minus 2592 or we can say that it is approximately uh, minus 2593. So this is minus 2593 pound feet. And if we remove this uh, minus sign, then this is the clockwise moment. So now this is the moment of uh, F1 about point A, which is 3000 pound is the moment of F2 about point A, that is 5600 pound feet. And the moment of F3 about point A is this much. Now in the second problem, we are asked to find the moment of these three forces uh, about point B. Right, so let me find the moment about point B. So now the moment of the moment about point B due to F1, and again the counterclockwise moment is positive, and this is equal to 
So now this F1 is going to produce the counterclockwise moment about that point, which is it's good. It's going to rotate the beam in this direction. Uh, it's going to apply the force and causing the beam to rotate in this direction, right? So it's make it's producing the counterclockwise moment. So we will write the plus, and now its magnitude is 375 and its perpendicular distance from that point B is this distance. So this distance is 6 plus 5 which is 11. So I will multiply it with 11. So 375 multiplied by 11, this gives us 4125. So this is plus 4125 pound feet and the plus sign means that this is the counterclockwise moment. So we will write CCW, counterclockwise moment. Now the moment about point B due to F2, again the counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive, this is equal to, so now as we can see that again this F2x, the line of action of this F2x is passing to that point B, so it is not going to produce the moment about that point B, so only this sine component is going to produce the moment about that point B, and it is producing the counterclockwise moment, so we will write F2, F2 is 500, sine of theta is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse which is 4 divided by 5 and the perpendicular distance of this f2y from that point b is this 5 feet distance we will multiply it with 5 and this f2x is not producing the moment about that point b since its perpendicular distance from that point b is 0 so this is uh, 500 divided by 5 is 100 and 100 into 4 is 400 and 400 into 5 is 2000. So this is equal to plus 2000 pound feet and the plus sign tells us that the moment produces counterclockwise moment. Similarly the moment of F3 about point B Again, the counterclockwise moment is positive. Now, if we look into this component, this cost component, so it is the line of action of this force is passing through that point B. So its moment arm from that point B is zero. So always remember that if the line of action of a given force is passing through uh, the axis of rotation or the point of rotation, so that is not going to produce a moment since its moment arm will be zero from that particular point. So now only this sine cumber is going to produce the moment about this point B and it is going to produce the counterclockwise moment. So we will write plus and that is 160 sine of 30 and the perpendicular distance of uh, this component from that point B is 0 0.5. So we will multiply it with 0 0.5. So this will give us 40. 160 into sine of 30 into 0 0.5 this gives us 40 so that is plus 40 pound feet and again the plus sign tells us that the moment produced due to f3 about point b is counterclockwise moment so this is the solution of these two problems i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy if you haven't done it yet